Welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. I'll have a pint of cast, please. Alright, right. now I feel like a right. Scale is the lifeblood of the British beer industry and a vital part of our country's culture. It was only a few decades ago that it was all we drank in our pubs, but in the last decade or so it's been in serious, sometimes double-digit decline. The closure of our beautiful pubs and increasingly tight margins in beer all play their part, but there's also been a drop-off in interest in car scale, especially among younger generations. Its reputation has been damaged by cliches about who drinks it and quality issues related to how hard it is to brew well and serve right. But after eight years of exploring the brewing world, we've come to believe that Carscale at its best is the ultimate way to enjoy beer. We've fallen in love with our traditional pubs, styles, breweries and culture and hate to see it slowly falling apart. So we've decided to do something about it. In a bid to ensure its survival, we've teamed up with Fuller's Brewery and spent the last six months filming stories that we hope will inspire people to get out there and drink cask ale more often. In episode four, we explore a new revolution in the furthest southeast reaches of the country. The Micropub was conceived to get around the huge startup costs and tied nature of most of the UK's pubs, but also to create new cask ale focused drinking dens with unique character. On our epic pub crawl of Margate and Broadstairs, we see firsthand how these wonderful micropubs and the breweries that supply them have breathed new life into the UK's forgotten seaside towns and high streets and become a microcosm of what's so great about car scale and the culture around it. Hey and welcome to the next episode in our odyssey into car scale. This week we're going to be delving into the future of pubs and one very specific kind of pub which is helping to protect and indeed grow the world of car scale. Which means coming to one of your favourite places on earth. Mate, we're in Margate, which is the absolute epicentre of the micropub scene in the UK. Which is probably the epicentre of the micropub scene worldwide <laughs> and what exactly is a micro pub so a micro pub is not your traditional pub it's it's a it's a one-man band it's probably a little place that's opened up in an ex shop unit right probably on a high street that was otherwise dead but brings back life to the high street so that means that they're escaping like the tie they're getting to build their own kind of vision of what a, a pub could and should be and i guess they're getting to serve exactly the stuff that they love that's it it's a personal expression of what these individuals love about great beer. And it's fantastic, mate. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to get stuck into the, uh, the micropubs of Thanet. Where are we headed first? Dude, we have to start right at the tippy top. We're gonna go to the Fez. My favorite pub, potentially, in the world. Oh my God, okay. Come on. Hey. So Phil, firstly, thank you for having us in your wonderful establishment. As Scotty would have said, welcome to the first. Why Margate? Why a micro pub? Why all this amazing stuff? Where did it all come from? Uh, well, firstly, Margate. Uh, I've lived here 25 years this year. Wow. So before the uh, resurgence, mm -hmm. 
Um, I was in Canterbury for, for quite a lot, a lot of years. Um, and then when, I, when it was cheaper to buy a house rather than rent one, uh, looked everywhere. And it was like rural properties. Found one in Margate and felt great. And then the people I worked with at the uh, art school in Canterbury said, said oh, you're moving to Margate? Isn't it a little bit rough? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm from Hartlepool, so being in Margate is like being on a holiday every day, if you've not been to Hartlepool. Uh, so that's how I ended up here. What was the other question? Uh, why a micropub? Uh, be your own boss. I don't think anybody's making uh, money as a, uh, a tenant landlord no. uh, these days. Friends of mine have tried it. I tried to persuade them not to. You've got independence, you've got freedom, you're not tied to anyone. You can serve what no, you like. Serve what we like. Um, choose your beer, wherever it's from. Uh, most of our beer is uh, from Kent. This is one of my favourite pubs in the world. And I don't say that lightly because <laughs> I've been to a lot of pubs and I think that's your personality that's literally all over the walls in here. You can taste it in the beer, you can taste it in the Tunnock's bars. <laughs> uh, you know, there's something very special about this place. Obviously, this has come out of your mind, all of this stuff. Is this your personal collection? Uh, yeah, there's a, a sign up there that used to be in my front room. Uh, and that was one of the first things that I brought down here. Which one's that? Uh, the players. Oh, yeah. The players' police sign. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Um, so that was by my little home bar mm. uh, at home, uh, as it will be. Uh, so I thought that's got to come down here, really, because it deserves to be in a place like this. So everyone says, oh, this is just like Phil's front room. Well, they've been very kind, because most of the stuff that was in there is in here <laughs> now. Here, so there's, right. there is well, You're a minimalist things. now. It's not, it's not exactly Poirot's <laughs> flat, um, but there's a bit less in the house now. But yeah, I, I, I've always enjoyed this stuff. I think the first year I opened, I did a bar at a friend's hotel in Broadstairs. And I was away for here for a week. And then after a week of being away from here, because mm. uh, I've had a few weekends here, but never a week. And then when I come in, the colour of the place hits you. Yeah. Now you can see that on certain people's faces when they come in in the door. And then they start taking photographs and uh, asking questions and all the rest of it. I don't see it because you're here every day. Mm. Margate over the last few years has had a, a massive cultural regeneration. Lots of art coming into the area with Turner and uh, an influx of artists moving here as well. What kind of role do you think micropubs have played in, in bringing these sort of artistic and new sort of cultural places into the mix? Well, actually, I think it's two uh, separate but related uh, yeah. issues. Uh, there was uh, an art scene here before the Turner, mm. um, and uh, I was involved in it uh, through the art school in Canterbury, uh, but obviously the Turner made a massive difference. But it is worth noting that that took quite a while because people drove to the Turner, went inside, ate at the Turner, got back in their cars and naffed off. So it took about 18 months, two years before people started to investigate the town. It's uh, funny that, isn't it? And that was apparent, very apparent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and lots of local traders uh, in that uh, first sort of two year period said it's made very little difference to them. Hmm. Then, when micropubs uh, started to open, vintage stalls, antique yeah. places, um, the old town started to look busier and so on, then people did start to investigate. Um, and now what we find, because of the micropubs in Thanet, um, there is an element of beer tourism. Exactly. So we have groups of people, and some of them come down from, say, Leicestershire, Nottingham, something, and they come to Thanet every year, uh, and it's groups of people. Uh, some come with their wives, sometimes it's a group of ten blokes. Mm. Uh, but they're coming here to Thanet for uh, beer tourism, if that's a thing. It is a thing, definitely. I mean, that's, it's a very unique thing to this area. Obviously, you've got Bermondsey Beer Mile and a, a couple of other places around the country, but there's nowhere, I don't think, that's as independent and as specific as Thanet um, and the micropub scene here. Well, cheers. Cheers. We left Field to set up for opening and took a jaunt around the Harbour Arms to the... Well, the Harbour Arms. A legendary micropub with an even more legendary view back across the water to Margate. There, Brad struck up a conversation with founder Carol. Alright Carol, you've got a great spot here. We certainly have, we've got the best location in Margate. How did you do that? Um, it was a cold, wet January day was trying to find a location, looked all around the old town, 
just happened to wander along here, saw these units and thought, perfect. Amazing. Not very good in the winter sometimes. No. But <laughs> when it's blowing a gale and the waves a bit chilly. are coming over. Yeah. But perfect for the summertime. I've heard you were the first micro pub I in Margate. Was, I was indeed the very first one to set up. Yes. Right. And I've also heard that a lot of your customers <laughs> went on to form their own micro pubs. They did, yes. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a, a few in Margate that did that and um, in the village that I live in in Minster. Yeah. Um, uh, two people that I knew that were customers here did that in Minster from the village down there. Brilliant, brilliant. So. Well, it's amazing. Um, we want to drink something local. What would you recommend? The localest one I've got is literally about 10 minutes from here. Perfect. And that is the Shivering Sands Brewery, the IPA. Two of those, please, Carol. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks so much. On the house. Ah. Oh, even better. Even better. Thanks, guys. Ah. Oh, all right, Johnny. How are we doing? It's not too bad, is it, mate? It's a nice little spot. For me, this is one of the best places to drink when you're in Margate. If you're out here, you want to be looking this way, looking at everything that Margate's got to offer, which is a lot. And if you go up there, you want to go up there any evening, when the sun is setting, this is why Turner came here. It's one of the best sunsets in the world. It's incredible. You're drinking fresh local cask, watching an absolute masterpiece of a sunset. Doesn't get much better than that. So Fanit has got over 30 micro pubs right. within these three little towns. Well, I'd say three, three main towns, Broadstairs, Ramsgate, Margate. They're also in little satellite towns like Minster and all these other little spots around. This is the first micro pub in Margate, I believe in 2013, Carol opened this. And so many regulars drank here that they went on to open up their own little micro pubs all around the Thanet area. Wow, so this place inspired other yeah. people to open. Yeah. They were like, I want to do this. Yeah, they were like, oh, that sunset is amazing. I'm going to open up in a town <laughs> centre. <laughs> it doesn't, that is the why. But I think they saw how special it was to sort of open up a little place like this where you're not tied to anything. You can serve whatever you like. Uh, you're not tied down to anyone, Johnny. And it's freewheeling. It's, it's more than that as well. Like not only are you not tied to to serving certain things, but what I love about the micro pub scene is that you can set up in the most unlikely yeah. of places. Like you could never get a pub here. No, 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 no pub chain in their right mind would go. You know that that old fisherman's hut. That could make a nice pub. And yeah. yet, with the micro pub, with that setup, whether it's bagging box or short draft lines focusing on cask and gin inside it, you can do that in a place like this. Th this is unlike any view of any pub, you know, in a remotely built up area. It's unbelievable. Um, and yeah, I love it here. And I love, love that little IPA as well. It's a beautiful, you know, kind of British take on, a, on an American hot beer. Special times. It doesn't get a lot better, does it? From there, we headed back to shore to visit the Two Halves, an award-winning micropub right on the seafront, just metres from the sand. Next up on our whistle stop tour, Johnny, Two Halves in the Two Halves. Yeah, I wonder how many sails they've lost by everyone else doing the same as what we just did. But um, it's, a, it's a beautiful nick, this. I've got a ruby red, yeah. which is lovely to see, you know, the, the micro pub allows you yeah. to put some more idiosyncratic, some more unusual stuff on there, and it's great to see classic British styles uh, being enjoyed in a place like this. And it's it, Thanet Pub of the Year in 2018. 2018. Lots of awards yeah, have yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a very well regarded yeah. micro pub. The other thing I've been noticing, so we're into our third pub now, and the only thing more incredible than the beer has been the cider lists. Yeah, that's pretty big down here. I think it's probably a summertime thing as well, but right. certainly there's a lot of cider action going on. Yeah, I think, I mean, certainly like Kentish cider is a thing, but also I feel like, you know, if, you know, if we think that cask ale is limited in its scope, real cider, you know, there's no place for that in these big Thai pubs or anything like that. So it's a great opportunity if you really love cider uh, to come to the micro pubs and try out just an unreal range of real cider. Yeah, and in the English Riviera, no less. Look at the view, it's unbelievable. It's incredible, incredible. So, big fan of the two halves. Probably should have got a pint, really. At that point, we were joined by a man who definitely drinks pints and introduced himself as the Pie Man. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Job, man, yeah. Thank you. What were you drinking then? Uh, that was a St. Austin tribute. Now I'm on Voodoo and then I'm going on to the Shandy. Right, yeah. Which is old Rosie with Merlot. What are you drinking that? <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the Pie Man to it, and indeed Margate to its nightlife, we made the short hop over to Broadstairs, where it just happened to be the town's annual folk festival. The whole place was absolutely buzzing. We're about three miles down the road from Margate. Such a different vibe, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think, uh, I think, well, it's folk festival right now, right? Yeah. So there's all kinds of partying going on. You can probably hear it. It's all along the front. All the pubs look rammed. I'm excited to see what kind of vibe's going to be in these ones. Yeah, they're all special in their own unique way, and uh, I can't wait to show you them. I've got a bookshop, which you're going to love. Where all the parties start. <laughs> to be fair to Brad, the chapel was unlike any library I've ever been to, with a whole row of real ale pumps to enjoy while you browse. It was also, as a bookshop should be, a peaceful and relaxing place. For now. Alrighty, so we've got the beers in. Yeah. Why do I feel like I'm in a medieval reenactment? I mean, Merlin's Library or something. You kind of are, mate. This is a, I think it's grade two listed medieval chapel. Oh my days. That is also a bookshop where you can buy literally all of these books around you. And I've bought many a book in my time. They're an absolute bargain. And I tell you what, what is better than drinking a little crispy boy like this? Fresh on. Fresh on, fresh as you like and just flicking through a load of books. It doesn't get much better than that. There's yeah, some serious conversation starters. You know, like the nun's priest's tale. I don't know whose tale so that, that is. Sounds like that a point. sexy romp to me. Do you reckon? I mean, there's one called Going Under, which I can really appreciate with the amount we've drunk today. <laughs> it's, uh, it's surrounded by culture as well as drinking it. It's incredible, right? And we're only just in the entrance of this place. It is epic in here. You go all up over there, there's medieval, chivalric kind of things on the wall go up the stairs it gets even more medieval and then you've got a couple of little rooms there that have just they're just library-esque just surrounded I mean, what i would say is it's not particularly micro so i guess micro doesn't just mean small i think it means individual as well right so this is independent and and unique right so i'm kind of maybe i'm sort of redefining micro <laughs> a little bit but it is a shop unit it was a, it was a it was a bookshop yeah and it is a bookshop. And it is still a bookshop. They just happen to With sell added beer. amazing beer. The best kind of bookshop in my book. Come on. After a reflective moment among the books, we were inevitably attracted to the other micro pub on this street, The Magnet. Far from being an oasis of calm, The Magnet had embraced the folk festival wholeheartedly. And soon, so did we, after a chat with founder Will. On that note, this Will, time. it's an absolute pleasure to meet you, mate. Cheers. Nice horn. Thanks for coming. Um, and nice pub. The Magnet. It is. You're quite new to the scene. Very. First time running a joint. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to be in Broadstairs and embrace the whole lifestyle down here. For me, it's supposed to be semi-retirement, and yeah. we've become more than a micro pub. We're now a local community pub. With, they want to start cricket teams, we've got backgammon going, there's a Subutio club in the winter, it's gone mad. That's so amazing. I'm not semi-retired, it's more, I'm hard, working harder than I ever did. Yeah. But I enjoy it. And, it's uh, rewarding. The idea of community, you were telling me earlier about every, all of the micropub community, you're all friends, we, right? You're we do, because we all talk to each other and we're all so different. Um, a lot of them run as a hobby, yeah. so they don't need to make lots of money. And it's all about low overheads and just being part of the community to hold, hold people together. Sorry, that's the Hot Rats just starting for Folk Week. Fantastic week. Um, and now I'm just listening to music and tapping my feet, <laughs> sorry. Well, it's been absolutely amazing talking to you. Absolute pleasure. And, uh, Thank you. You know, the Magnet is a wonderful place. And I'm going to come in and enjoy a bit of the folk music now. Why not? Hot rats! Why not? Hot rats. And then you may even get a little folk jam session up around the corner in the marquee because that's what we've promoted and they've been finding it and, and adoring it. And, and it's just nice to sit and chill. And, and just there's violins, there's guitars, there's 
penny whistles today. There was I love it. All sorts of stuff. Cheers. Cheers. Let's, let's go and have it. Let's go. So it's safe to say that last night got a bit hectic towards the end, didn't it, Brad? Oh, my head. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling surprisingly chirpy. I think it was the Travel Lodge breakfast. No, it definitely wasn't the Travel Lodge <laughs> breakfast. Um, so we're not done with our exploration of Thanet just yet. No. Uh, today we are headed off to the Ramsgate Brewery, mostly kind of colloquially known as Gads. Yes. Uh, who make they make fantastic, absolute world class, incredible British car scale. British hot beers with a real focus on balance and, and um, I guess uh, pointability is, is a better word for it I think um, and we're gonna go visit them because Eddie who owns the brewery he opened up that brewery in 2000 you know a couple of years before the first micro pub was opened and before the Isle of Thanet as a whole had its kind of cultural revolution and came back to the former glories that's it so he's seen it all and obviously he's he's stocked uh, a lot of these pubs they helped him grow he helped them grow um, and is very much part of that scene so we're going to go have a chat with him about what's changed and indeed what needs to change uh, to kind of spread the amazing car scale culture that has sprung up down here with the micro pubs uh, and with breweries like the ramsgate brewery right to eddie's to eddie's As I was, I was building the brewery on the seafront in, a, in an old restaurant, back of an old restaurant, and a chap from the local pub company came in and asked what I was doing and said, and I told him I was building a brewery, he said, to brew what kind of beer? And I said, cask-conditioned beer. And he said, nobody fucking drinks that around here. <laughs> it's and the he, kind of encouragement a new business needs. Yeah, no, yeah absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and he was absolutely right. There were, there were about five or six pubs in Thanet itself that were free of Thai and could actually sell a cask of beer. Wow. Um, to the extent that the um, pub of the year was shared out on a rotational basis. But now, I mean, it must be incredible. So you, you guys have been going now for pushing 20 years. 20 years you, next year. Yeah, yeah seen a complete yeah. change in the fortunes of cask ale in, in Thanet. Absolutely, yeah. And a couple of factors, we, you know, we. The first Thanet Beer Festival was uh, an absolute runaway, stonking success. Uh, they sold the beer out in four hours. It was supposed to last for two or three days, as I remember. <laughs> and this was against everybody's prediction because nobody drank cask beer in Thanet. Yep. But it turned out that, um, given the chance, they would. They, well, they, given the chance to go for a drink on Good Friday, they'd have drunk anything, to be fair. <laughs> But uh, I think that started to win the people over. Uh, but the, kind of the big revolution was, without doubt, I think the micro pubs have transformed the area. So, while it's not been sort of immune to sort of the craft beer, the very modern American influenced beer revolution, it feels like down here it's still a real love of traditional British brewing and you know British hops. Is that because you know this is where a lot of the hop farms are? Is there something there, or what is it? Uh, I think it's the demographics. Right, oh, the age. We're all a lot older. <laughs> <laughs> we do get to a lot of traditional English uh, and English hopped beer in Thanet now because uh, I think the quality's there, so. Right, so just literally the hops and the, the processing of it has really improved. Yeah, I think the quality's good the, and, and people are, have really enjoyed it. And so I think, I think in a sense, the, that English cask beer has managed to um, elevate itself back up to uh, back up to a level where the drink is like oh it's just as tasty as hot head. Mm -hmm. I can walk into twenty or thirty pubs in 
in Thailand where pretty much everybody is drinking cask beer. Mm -hmm. uh, at least 30 pubs around here. So, so in a sense, what is, so why is cask beer um, across the country in decline when it clearly isn't in decline around here? But what I do notice is those 20 or 30 pubs, well, nearly all of them will be independent. Mm -hmm. So are, are, are you, to me, it sounds like you're saying like Kent is doing it right and you're growing cask and you're growing this excitement and protecting this thing. Um, and there's some structural issues in the way, but it doesn't have to be that way. We could have cask growing again nationally. It's, uh, it's such a big question and, uh, and lots and lots of people are scratching their heads and have been for a long, long time trying to find the answer. So I haven't got it. So I, I console myself with the... Uh, I'm, because I own a brewery, um, cask ale will be around until I die. Mm -hmm. That is an absolute guarantee. We just need to keep you alive, and then at least <laughs> yeah, Ken, yeah, yeah, at least Ken will be going. Um, <laughs> we'll all drink to that. <laughs> Short of changing our campaign to keep Eddie alive, our trip to Thanet has taught us a lot about what needs to be done to save cask. Presenting it in beautiful form is the obvious one, but also putting it on in places with a sense of community, creativity and independence is vital to welcoming in new people and getting that fresh beer moving through the lines. Another way of doing that, of course, is to drum up excitement about specific beers and to keep creating history. And that's what we'll be exploring in the finale as we witness the brewing of Fuller's Vintage Ale 2021 and meet the team behind it.